Hey, Red Blue Green here. I have been obsessed with the state of the CSGO market for the last few weeks, so I spent a bunch of time creating estimates of CSGO case drop numbers and creating some ridiculous spreadsheets in Excel to help myself get a better idea of what cases might be worth buying and what the supply might look like. In this video, I'll share with you how I came up with the estimates that I did, what my conclusions are, what variables there are to consider, and how I'm planning to use what I've learned. But first, I just want to take a quick moment to disclaim that this is all just speculation. I've tried my best to make as reasonable of assumptions as possible, but none of the conclusions you will see are certain. There are unknown variables at play here, so don't use anything that I present here as fact. I've visualized a lot of data, and it may give you a better idea of what the current supply of various cases might look like and which cases are most valuable. But again, don't trust the exact numbers that I show. This is not investment advice. If you use this video for inspiration, make sure you're not just acting based on what I say. Think for yourself, try out your own estimations, and come to your own conclusions. The only thing that I know for fact is that my numbers are incorrect. That said, I think there are a lot of interesting calculations to be discussed here, and even with the absence of sound data, I believe that we can draw a lot of insight from the little information that we have. As we all are probably aware of by now, case unboxing numbers have gone through the roof. But with so many players in game, surely there are a lot of cases being created through drops as well. These are the main questions I sought to answer. How many cases are being dropped in game? Is it enough to keep up with unboxing demand? And what is happening to the supply of each case? To find the answers, I turned to two main sources of data. Fiediuk's case unboxing estimates on CSGOcasetracker.com and CSGO player count on Steam charts. Fiediuk's numbers are calculated by tracking the number of skins as they appear in the csgofloat.com database. The numbers aren't perfect, but they should be fairly accurate. So, we have an idea of how many cases are being unboxed, but we seemingly have no clue how many cases are actually being dropped. We do know that the number of players correlates to a higher number of cases dropped, but actually finding out how much is a whole other problem. I've broken it down into a few different factors. First, there's the number of average players in game for the time period we're calculating. That's easy, just pull it off the Steam Charts site. Let's start with March. 843,474.5 average players. Next, we have the number of individual players required to create the value of that average player count that we just grabbed. Obviously, not every player is spending 24 hours of the day every day in Counter-Strike. So we have to determine how many players are contributing time in order to make up that average player count. This is our second variable. Let's say the average player spends three hours a day in game. Some will play for a lot more, some will play for a lot less, but let's start there. This would mean that for every one of our average players, there are actually eight different players contributing time. Next up, not everyone who plays CS is even allowed to get case drops. Only users who have spent money on the game to have prime account status are allowed to get drops. As far as I understand, we really have no way of knowing what percentage of the active player base is using prime accounts, but it's probably a fair amount. Sure, not everyone is going to want to pay money to play the game, but the players most likely to stick around long term are also more inclined to have prime accounts. For the sake of demonstration, I'll just say that 70% of players have prime status. We can always change this later. For our last variable, each player, or more specifically each account, is allowed a maximum of two case drops per week. The first case comes pretty easily, usually after just three or four hours of gameplay. However, anecdotal evidence suggests that obtaining the second case is fairly uncommon. Even if someone spends upwards of 20 hours out of the week playing CSGO, they're not guaranteed their second case. We've assumed that the average player is playing for three hours a day, so we can safely say that most players are going to get at least one case drop. The players who play longer may get a second case, but they might be skewing the average player count higher comparatively anyway, and any player that continues to play even after receiving their second case drop also skews the player count up without contributing any more cases. There's a lot of wiggle room here, and I'm not sure what the average would really be, but I'm almost completely sure it should be above 1, but not near 2. For now, let's say the average number of cases dropped per player per week is 1.4. Since that last number is per week, it needs to be multiplied by the number of weeks being analyzed. Since we're calculating an entire month, we'll multiply it by 4. Altogether, this formula gives us 26,451,360 cases dropped in the month of March. We can apply this to any given time period, as I've done in this chart here. 
Using these values, we see there has been a significant boost in the number of cases dropped recently as a result of the increase in players, but it is not comparable to the massive rise in unboxings that we have seen within the same time period. Are these numbers correct? No. And in order for them to be correct, we would need to somehow tweak these variables perfectly, which we have no means of doing. The point here is that we've produced an easy way to see what these numbers could look like, and we have a simple method for tweaking the variables to produce what we believe to be close to accurate numbers. If you feel that the portion of prime accounts should be larger, then all we need to do is increase that number, and we can see the kind of results that might produce. Looking back at the unboxing numbers, we see that the number of cases unboxed was previously averaging somewhere around 20 to 24 million by month. This makes our number of cases dropped seem to be lower than it should be, under the assumption that only recently did unboxings begin to outpace drops. To remedy this, I could take a second look at the variables. Maybe the number of players contributing to the player count should be increased. So I'll change it from 8 to 9. Maybe the prime percentage should be a bit higher. So I'll change it from 70% to 80%. Now, we have numbers that show more cases being dropped than opened, right up until the month of March. Since the middle of March, opening numbers have only continued to creep up higher. Something important to consider here is individual case rarity and drop chance. The number of cases opened by type of case is highly disproportionate. Some cases are opened a lot, others not as much, and each case has its own chance of dropping. The existence of different drop pools means that some cases drop only very rarely, while others may drop as frequently as about 1 in every 5. Currently, there are 5 cases in the active duty drop pool, 28 in the rare drop pool, and 6 discontinued cases that do not drop at all. The active duty pool makes up 99% of all cases dropped, and the rare pool makes up the remaining 1%. Each case in its respective pool shares its relative portion of that chance. So within the active duty pool, each case has a 19.8% chance of dropping, and within the rare pool, each case has a 0.03571% chance of dropping. Pretty low. Despite the low chances for rare cases, rare cases still make up a large portion of cases unboxed. From the time when these cases were classified as active duty and had higher drop percentages, the supply gradually built up. After being moved to the rare pool, however, the supply has continually dropped, some faster than others. The remaining supply of discontinued cases continues to be consumed as well. Using our estimated drop totals and multiplying by drop chance, we can get an idea of how many cases of each type are likely to be created in any given month, and we can compare the results with the rate of their consumption. Using the CSGO case tracker data, we find that certain rare cases such as the Phoenix, Breakout, and Chroma 2 cases have been opened at an astounding rate compared to their expected production rates. In most cases, the higher demand will be reflected in the market price and quantity at any given time. As case supply gets lower and lower, price naturally gets higher, thus why rare or discontinued cases have always been a relatively safe investment in the past. Now we are beginning to see even the continual rise of active duty case prices, which we didn't see happen in the past because the abundance of active duty cases being generated dwarfed the amount being opened. Even still, rare and discontinued cases are clearly the most disproportionately consumed. Based on our numbers here, over 12 million more Gamma 2 cases were unboxed than dropped from January of 2022 through March of 2023. These numbers in particular are much less dependent upon the accuracy of our variables, as the drop chances for rare cases are so low that at these opening rates the amount of cases produced almost ceases to matter. Rare cases might as well be considered discontinued at this scale. Of course, we still have no knowledge of how many cases are out there sitting in inventories ready to be listed, but this can help us to perceive the potential rate at which they are nearing borderline extinction. This chart here aims to help you assess which cases are most worth buying. I've included the percentage of unboxings that they make up, minus the given chance that they drop in-game, which highlights which cases are most likely to be decreasing in supply the fastest. I have a column for the Steam market price at the time of research, so you know which are the cheapest, a column for the age of the case, which highlights cases that have had more time to decrease in supply, and a column for market quantity at the time of research, which is rather volatile and can likely be disregarded, but which does reflect to some extent what the remaining supply is and how much changes in the quantity are likely to affect the price. Generally, green is good and red is bad. Cases such as Chroma 2 could be a good option because the individual price isn't insanely high, they've been around for a while, and they've been unboxed like crazy. Something not taken into account here is the value of the actual skins that each case contains. 
case unboxing ROI is constantly changing, but it's another factor that you may want to consider for your selection. Some cases are highly desirable as they may have more coveted exclusive items like the butterfly knives contained in the breakout case. Unfortunately, predicting changes in what skins are more desirable may be tricky, and the current demand is typically already reflected in the price of a case. If you think that butterfly knives will not be obtainable via a future case, and butterfly knife demand will remain high for a long time, then you shouldn't feel too bad paying extra for a breakout case. But as I see it, you shouldn't necessarily be led to buy a breakout case for that reason either, since that reasoning has already inflated the price that you were paying. You may have made it this far, and you're still thinking, hold on, how can we trust numbers based on a bunch of variables that we're just guessing on the values of? Well, what if we came up with an entirely different way of obtaining the, an estimate for the number of drops? This one relies on only one variable. The only problem is that if we get the variable wrong, our numbers are going to be way off because it's all reliant on just that one variable. But hey, it can't hurt to try, and maybe it'll help us get a feel for how accurate our other calculations might be. As you may know, the Revolution case is the newest case added to the game. As of me writing this, the case has only been out for 65 days. During that time, the case has had a drop chance of 19.8%, and has been opened about 5,513,770 times. Knowing that, if we were to determine how likely any given Revolution case dropped since its release has of having been opened, we could find the number of total Revolution cases dropped, and given the average player count for the same time period, we could calculate exactly how many cases have been dropped for each number in that average player count. So there's our variable. What percentage of Revolution cases unboxed gave us that number for total opened? It's a new case, so interest is naturally elevated, Prices have been high, so we can assume that a good amount of cases being listed are being purchased. Market quantity is also not particularly high. It is of course possible that many of the cases being purchased are not being unboxed, but we also know that the number of cases being unboxed right now is ludicrously high, so we have a reason to assume that a large portion of those dropped are being opened. What this percentage actually is will greatly impact the results here, so I would encourage you to come up with your own number. But my first instinct was to try 50%. It's hard for me to imagine that much more than that are going unopened. Plug that in with weighted averages for the number of active players since the case's release, and we wind up with an estimated 30.77 cases per average active player per month. Multiply this number by the number of active players for any given month, and we have another estimate for number of cases dropped. This comes out lower than our other estimate. If you feel that our percentage was too high, we could change it to 40% and you'll see that the numbers come out slightly above our other estimate. I'd like to see other methods of approximating the number of case drops if anyone else has some ideas. The more different methods we have, the more easily we could rein in our approximations by comparing them and get a reasonable spread of possible numbers. Ultimately, we're in an environment now where clearly the supply of old cases is greatly strained. Sure, there are hoarders out there with thousands of any particular case that could flood the market at any given time, but people are opening them, and people are opening them at an absurd rate. The prices should just keep going up over the long run. Valve could of course change the likelihood of rare cases, but even if they gave the rare case pool five times the probability that it has now, many of them would still be getting unboxed faster than they're dropped. I personally have been buying up some cases while I can. I haven't invested in one single case, I've invested in a spread of cases. Most of them are rare cases, and you could probably guess which ones based on my charts. Spectrum 2, Gamma 2, Chroma 2, Phoenix, Wildfire, Prisma 2, Danger Zone, Chroma 3, Revolver, and so on. To clarify, I'm not saying you should go out and do the same. I've probably made some mistakes. The data could be wrong, and just about anything could happen. I just believe the future of Counter-Strike to be more stable than that of even many well-regarded companies, and the math of it all just makes sense to me, so I decided to throw a little bit of money behind it. It may not work out. Don't rely on just this video. See if you can verify for yourself if it's a good idea or not. If you have any conflicting thoughts or other ideas, I'd like to hear them in the comments. I do not want this video to be plainly received as a call for others to buy up cases. In fact, I would rather that less people invested in them. I still haven't bought very many, and I would of course love lower prices, since I'm buying. It would be in my best interest for those who watch this video to ignore it, and for everyone to just continue opening the cases and erasing the supply, causing the value to naturally and gradually increase. Investors hoarding cases actually slows that process from a long-term perspective, and makes the remaining supply harder to gauge.
Thank you to Fiedjik for the unboxing statistics that I used. And if you'd like to play around with my spreadsheets and test different inputs, you can find them linked in the description below in XLSX and PDF formats. If you found any of this helpful or just enjoyed the video, leave a like and let me know if I should do more of this sort of thing. This was Red Blue Green. Thank you for watching Slump Virus.